And I suspect um, that it's time to get started. So uh, we've all been chatting, so we all know Jacob uh, uh, uh from Religious Studies, at least a little bit. And um, the he, newest um, associate professor in Religious Studies. Hmm? Newest yes. associate professor in Religious Studies. Oh, newest associate. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so he's going to be leading us through the speed grader. So, Jacob, let me send it, send it all to you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, so let me, just before I jump in, Rachel told us about sort of how well she knows Canvas. Um, Teresa, are you here? Can you let us know or maybe put it in the chat? And also, Esmeralda, could you let us know how, you, how well you feel, comfortable you feel with Canvas? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a, bef whatever comes before a beginner. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so we will, uh, so let me share my screen here. I'm going to show you, um, thank you, great. Um, I'm going to show you two different things today in SpeedGrader and Gradebook. Uh, the first is the sort of standard, what you do on your laptop thing. And then there's also, Canvas has this really great teacher app that you can use on an iPad or another kind of tablet um, that I think is really, really great for grading, especially for the kinds of like essay grading that I do a lot. Um, but we'll do that afterwards because that's not perhaps what everybody's going to be doing. Um, okay, so let me share my screen here real quick. Okay, everybody seeing this now? So as you all know, this is what you get on your dashboard when you sort of log into Canvas. Um, and your courses are up at the top. Anything you're working on is going to be here. And then depending on how your screen is set up, either down below that or over on the right side, if there's room, you're going to have this to-do block. And this to-do block is really, really handy because that tells you anytime a student submits something, it will pop up in your to-dos. Um, and that will take you straight to the to the the uh, quick grader, um, speed grader we call it the speed grader for that assignment. So I'm going to show you a couple of different kinds of things. Let's start with this close reading quiz. Um, and so you'll see here uh, across the top we have sort of our uh, our icons of various things. This tells you what what we're grading here. Close reading one. How many have been graded? how many, which one of those ones you're on, who the student is. So we can see here that uh, Adrian Ambrose does not, has not submitted anything for this assignment. So we're going to skip her by moving right. Glenn Ambrose also does not have anything for this assignment. But Ann David, a uh, responsible student that she is, submitted this for her uh, close reading. Oh, this is not a quiz. Sorry, I cl clicked on the wrong one. This is a paper. Well, okay, we're gonna do this. So you get a paper that pops up, right? like this. Um, these things we're just gonna go quickly through. You can download this paper, right? Which will just download this single paper. Maybe you're gonna do that if there, you think that there's a plagiarism case you're gonna have to document for or something, right? I'll also show you how to download all of the assignments for a particular assignment. Um, it tells you where you are. If the student for some reason submitted pictures of it and they're left or right from where they should be, you can fix that and zoom in and out. These are your sort of major ways of commenting on the, um, on the computer. And so you can select something, you can drop a pin and type something. Um, and then if you come back and you wanna make a second comment, you can just reply to that, right? You can highlight something, uh, let's see and then make a comment on that if you want. Sorry, there's too many English teachers on this call. I am self-editing. Um, you can type text here if you want something for the student to see right away. Um, and you can make that a different color if you want. Uh, 
you can strike stuff out if you want to say, you really don't need this, right? Um, and then this is more helpful in the app than it is here. But if you want to, with your mouse, try and leave freehand comments, you can do that, right? Uh, and this lets you select a, an area that you can put a comment on, which is perhaps more helpful for some kinds of assignments than others, right? So those are our basic things here. Jacob, before you leave this, um, yes. that little uh, box of text you added right into the paper, was that the T icon? I was, how'd you, how'd you do that again? Which please this up at the top? Text. Yeah, the That's please the key for text. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yep. So this is a point, this is highlight, this is add text, this is strike out, this is draw, and this is put in a box. On the right here, if when you start made your assignment, you set it up for turn it in, you'll get your turn it in report here. Oops, not that one. Yeah. Which will open in a, new, in a new page. And this tells me helpfully that um, the, some of these things are quotations from the book. And some of these things are, you know, similar to other things that have been submitted, right? Is Just that like automatically put in there? Uh, when you create the assignment, you have, I'll show you how to do that. You okay. have to turn it on. But if you automatic, if you put it in the assignment, it is automatically there. Yes. And then when you're done, you can add some, some sort of top level comments. Um, <laughs> and then um, put in your grade, right? And then click submit and it goes straight into your grade book. And the student will see whatever you see here, right? So they will see these strikeouts and drawing and doodles and whatever things you do. When I'm grading on the computer, I most often use the highlighter and comment on highlighting um, because most often I think that helps students see what I'm talking about. But I recognize that's gonna be discipline specific and, um, just a second, um, and um, and and different that for everybody. This little thing here, you can um, record either an, a, an audio or a, I think it might let you do a video comment for a student if you find that easier just by clicking on this. Um, so here, yeah, we can start a recording and say you know, and say what we want to say straight to camera if that is easier than typing. And then when you're done, you just click submit and all that gets saved. When you're, um, okay, let me just show you in the grade, in the assignments, that thing you were asking about. So I'm back here at courses, right? I'm in the course, I go to the assignment. If I make a new assignment, Rachel, um, you name it, you tell the students what you wanna know, you say how many points it is, what assignment group it's gonna belong to and how, how you're gonna display the grade. This is all just like Blackboard. Um, I almost always have students submit things online. You can choose that like, you know, uh, if it's participation, they're not gonna submit anything, right? But you still wanna give them a grade for it. So there's no submission. If you want them to give you a piece of paper, you can say that. Um, I have not used the external tools for this, but I know there are, there are some you can use. Uh, for these online submissions, I always restrict file uploads. And I usually restrict to doc, docx, and PDF. That way I know that everything will be readable by the computer and their student isn't sort of sending, because you know, you always get that one who submits something in yes. or whatever, right? This will not let them up upload that document. Um, it will say to them, this is not one of the approved file types. And so you don't have to deal with it at that point. Um, so here under plagiarism review, this is where you would want to click turn it in. And then uh, you can show, you can okay. make all your notes there, right? Okay, thank you. Um, while I'm here, let me talk about this just because it's a really helpful thing. It takes a little bit of work to do, but you can set up different assignments for this, different assignment dates for the same assignment to different students. So in my class that I'm teaching this spring, students have to do four close readings over the course of the semester. They signed up for dates. I went in and, and set up Canvas for this so that they were, it's all in their calendar the way it is. And that on time late stuff 
is all tracked individually by student based on when it was actually due. And so you can you can add as many of these as you want, you know, so I can say this one's going to be due for Glenn on this date and this one's going to be due for Adrian on this date and and Ann Davids is due on this date and then just put the the all the thing in and click save um, and that'll all be updated. The one thing I ran into trouble this spring is we had the great Texas freeze of 21 which changed my whole syllabus and so then I had to go back and change all of this but Hopefully that is not a normal part of our life going forward. Any questions about either assignments or what I've talked about so far before I move on? Okay, then let's go back to my dashboard and let me uh, grade this quiz. So when you build a quiz, um, again, we've got all the same stuff at the top. It tells you which quiz it is, it tells you um, how many of them you've graded, what the percentages are, what student you're on, and stuff up here. If it's a question you put in that it it can grade, a true, false, a, um, oops, what did I do? A true or false, a, um, a multiple choice, those kinds of things, the, those will be graded. And so you'll notice that up at the top, it says only questions three and four on this quiz need to be graded for this student. Right, And so um, when I get down to this question three, I can say, I can put in my comments. Um, grade the thing. And then I can, if I want to, go to the next student and it should keep me at that question. So the important thing for that about for me is when I'm doing when I'm grading exams, I don't want to grade one student all the way through. I want to grade question three all the way across all the students. And so it will keep that same sort of visual for you as you go through each of these students. And then when you move down to question four, it'll do the same thing, right? Um, again, you can let, you can put comments on each individual question. You can set up uh, responses for these things. So for example, here, um, I set this up so that if someone answered true, they would get this feedback from the system, right? And if they'd said false, they would get different feedback, right? Oh, this is now wrong because we, we played with it in the last session. And then when again, when you're done, just click submit and it will save where you are. And the beautiful thing about um, the beautiful thing about this to-do list is these will go away once they're complete, but if you have missed a question or something on an exam, it will still stay in your to-do thing. So you don't, um, so it will keep bugging you until everything is actually filled in. That's gradable. Okay. Any questions about that part? Jacob, there was a, a question in the chat from Esmeralda about oh, yes. uh, rewrites. Let's say somebody turned in a paper and you want them to do it again. So there's a couple ways to do that. If you want it to replace the previous one, when you're making an assignment, let me uh, go back to here and I go to assignments. assignments. New assignments. Actually, let me do one last thing. So this, uh, this disputation we were looking at, right? Um, so you can see that I put it, this is what I've given the students. I said it's worth 25 points. This is how they're gonna submit it. This is the rubric, um, and I'll show you this in a minute that I'm gonna use to grade it. If I want to edit this, I can change. Um, where is it? Yeah. So submission attempts. You can make this limited or unlimited. So if you want to say they can only submit one document, I don't know why you do that, but you can. Um, then uh, you can do that. But if you do unlimited, then once if you've got more than one submission from the same student, the most recent you can change the setting, but the most recent grade is what will show in up in um, in the grade book. I think I have one of those. Let me show you. I think that my test student, um, I don't, what is, something is wonky here. Okay, let's try this again.
Why am I not actually seeing my gradebook? I think it's on individual view. So up in the corner, if you went to gradebook. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, so for this test student, this disputation, I think I uploaded more than one. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I thought I hated, sorry. So if you upload more than one, then it will say here over on the side that if there are these two or three versions of it and you can just grade the most recent one, all the comments will still be there. So if I have a student do a rewrite, I would have them resubmit it in the same place, right? So it keeps both versions for you in, the, in that same place. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, sure. Huh. Okay. Um, so let's look at my... So we've talked about an essay, we've talked about a quiz. Those are really the two major kinds of things that I grade. Let me show you, I'm gonna close this out and show you the other app real quick. Um, okay, so the app looks like this. You can see the little teacher app. It's called, if you search for Canvas, uh, you want the teacher version. There's also a student version, but that doesn't help you. Um, and when you open up the app, you're going to see a very similar kind of things. You've got your classes across the top. You've got your courses, your to do and your inbox at the bottom. Um, so I've gotten to the point where I, if I've got a ton of grading to do, take my iPad and go to the coffee shop because I can put my iPad on the table and it's like having a stack of papers. I have my stylus and I can do all of this stuff. Um, I can respond to student emails and I don't have to load my computer around. Now, not all of us can do that, but if you have a tablet of some sort, this is a great help. Um, it all works pretty similarly to the other one. So we grade the disputation. Uh, I can make the same kinds of comments. I can make a point comment. A, do you see where I am up here on the left? a point comment, a highlight, add text, strike something out, highlight an area, um, or, and here's where the paintbrush is really helpful. You can change your color. I like to grade in green. Everybody has their preferences about this. Um, so with my stylus, I can just write on it like, and as usual, the students have to read my handwriting, but, it's, it's for me, it's just like grading in terms of how we normally are used to doing this on paper, right? Um, and you can move all, you can, if you've decided that this is illegible and you wanna try again, um, right? Um, and then once you've done all of that, all of your annotations, under grades, the rubric that I showed you that I'd uploaded is all going to sort of come in here and I can just, when it, sorry, this is from yes, the other sessions, you can grade each of the sections of your rubric just as you would normally, and it will tally all of that. You don't have to do any math and put it right in your, um, right in your gradebook. If you want to make comments on particular parts of the rubric, you can do that by clicking on the, um, or it will remind you what you'd said about those things. So whatever you put in your rubric when you built it will show up under a long description. Um, and then, oh, here, so under files, this is where you'll, on, in the app, you'd find multiple things if they were uploaded, right? And then again, you like, uh, when you're done with this, you can just, click out of done, and that disappears out of my to-do list. Um, so here, this one thing needs needs grading, this story from Ann David's son. Um, and so I'm going to uh, make some comments here and say, right? Um, and again, you can look at the at the files. 
whatever comments you've made and how you're going to grade it out of however many points you said that this was worth. So I think it's really, really slick. Um, let me stop that and give you guys a second to ask questions and or say there's something you'd like to talk about. Okay, uh, Jake, something I used to do in Blackboard, uh, I would sometimes have like the entry level quiz. You had to get, let's say, 80 to move mm -hmm. on to the next assignment. Does uh, Canvas do that? Yeah, so with a quiz, again, you can say how many attempts can they have. Okay. And so when you set up a quiz, let me go into this little syllabus quiz I made, and we're going to edit it. I think I understand about the multiple attempts. What I'm asking about is, will it block them from doing, let's say, other things? Oh, I see. I think there's a way to do that in mastery paths. And again, I don't really use them, so I don't know how okay. to set it up. Yeah. So it, That's one thing it, I'm getting from this week is that we need to do a whole thing on mastery paths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's what that is. That's what Mastery Path does, is that very thing. Okay. Do you have to use that for everything? Or like, maybe I had one, you know, I used to have like one unit that I- That's right. Because they it did can, on their own. Yes. And then you, you just, depending on their score, you shoot them to whatever the next, you know, remediation or extra, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. You, build, you, build you can also set that up in pages for, um, and, and the, um, what do they call models, whatever it's called, modal. Uh, you can set up that it, they have to achieve a certain amount in order to go on. Oh, that's true too. And yeah, yeah. before you can advance to the next module, right? Right, right. right. Module, so I couldn't think of the word. the next thing on the next page, I see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That makes it easier, which is always a goal for me. No, sure. Yeah, the modules is really helpful. And um, one thing that we were looking at yesterday is if you, we, we're looking at how you build a quiz and how you move questions around, everything in, in Canvas is visually designed, right? So with modules, after the great freeze, I could move the, the modules around in the order that we were gonna do them just by dragging them on the page, right? Which is um, really great. Everything has these little like four dot handles. Let me show you. Uh, So anytime you see one of these little sets of dots here, that's that's a handle that you can grab. So like if I want to move this disputation up or down or to a different module, all I have to do is kind of grab the handle. I don't know why that one won't move. But do you see what we're doing here? So if we want to change the order of these things, we can just move them around by doing that. Uh, the three dots is always a menu. Um, one nice thing about uh, that I'm starting to use more is that um, these cal calendars set up so you can see these are all the due dates for my students who have different due dates in this, their close readings. And so on their individual calendar, they are going to have similarly color coded things for each of their classes and it will just show up on the date that things are due for them. So if they use the calendar in Canvas, once all their classes are on Canvas, it's their calendar of all the stuff their faculty have put together, which is helpful. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's really what it is. <laughs> SpeedGrader is, I think, pretty pretty clear. Um, I, if you have a, um, have access to a tablet of some sort, I strongly recommend using it for grading. Um, I think it's a much more, in, even more intuitive. If you wanna type, then obviously having a full-size keyboard is nice. Um, so I guess it depends on how you grade. I love going to the coffee shop and grading a stack of essays. Um, and I don't love doing that with my, uh, my laptop. Although my last laptop did in fact die that way because I was trying to do it and something got knocked onto it. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's. Can I add on to that just a minute? Next year, we, we will we'll be offering a laptop that folds back so that mm -hmm. you can and have a stylus. And so then you can use 
you know, you can use it like a, well, it would be like, like a, a tablet. tablet. Yeah, it's a two-in-one. So okay. you can also use the whiteboard too. It just makes it easier for faculty. That's great. Yeah. Um, I will make sure that we tell Michael from Spanish that because he was asking about those kinds of things yesterday in yeah. Monday's group. Yeah, no, we're just, I actually just, we just, I gave one to a, a business uh, faculty member. He, oh, first I thought, I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to tell him that it doesn't work and I'll hang on to myself. But but but, but then he, I just want him to look at it and try it. And he's like, can I keep it? And I'm like, oh, let me call. And yeah, so do the two minutes, but but just with the whiteboard functionality and using the stylus. And so that very thing would make that um, uh, possible as well. So great. Yep. I have a question. I have two questions. One is, um, so I know I've seen this on one of these other meetings we had, but let's say we had a quiz or an exam on there. Uh, I know that Blackboard gives us the um, item analysis for each question, and I can't remember where I find that on this one. This came up on Monday too, and it's not a thing that I, I know how to do this. Kathy, do you remember, or Terry know what that is? Right, let me, uh, yeah. Okay, Terry, do you want to take that one? No. Can Terry, you're almost, almost missing. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's an option in new quizzes. Um, let me share my screen. I can go to a um, course here. Hold on just a second. So when you're here and you're going into new quizzes, come on. You're in, yeah. Uh, Make sure I can, you can see my screen here. Okay, so okay. Okay, so now that I've got, um, where did I put this? Okay. So as you're, once you've got your um, quiz started, and then you go into your, quiz under C under reports, then you have an, a quiz and item analysis and an outcomes analysis as part of those two pieces. So it's in, so first you'll build your quiz, then you do the settings, and then once everybody takes the test, you come back here to reports and you can get your uh, so item and out, outlook analysis. Even if we already had one made, how do we go back and change that one? Well, it depends on if it's a new quiz or not. So if you created it under regular quizzes, you can convert that quiz into a new quiz. Let me see if I can't. Oh, so new quiz is, you're not saying just a new quiz. You're saying new quiz. It's, new, it's, the, it's the tool is called new quiz. I Got guess it. I should, I should, yeah, hold on. Just Jacob, do you use new quizzes? I didn't because the last, one time I tried to open something, it said, if you're trying to do something that I was trying to do, you want to use the old quizzes tool. Okay, because I can show you how to do it in old quizzes. Okay. I, I'm actually in your sandbox right now, and I can, I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Yeah, Sarah Luna only works in classic quizzes, and I know she does item analysis. Yeah, it's in both. Yeah, it's in both. It's it might look a little different. Terry, do you are, while you're looking, should I show in old in well, old? Quizzes? Yeah, I mean, I well, I'm done. That was all I needed to show. Is that, oh, okay. Um, so you'll need to let the screen go so she can share. Okay, I'll just just show you quick. And um, so this is 
Jacob's sandbox, just because you're, is this okay, Jacob, if yeah, I show this? Okay, so you go to quiz statistics right here on the right, to the right menu. And what are your under quizzes? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I went to the quiz. I went to uh, the quiz. I, I looked at your quizzes right here on the very left. Yep. And then I chose a quiz called syllabus quiz and opened it. Yep. And then I went over here to, on the very far right to quiz statistics. Got and it. That, and then it just shows you the summary and then the question breakdown. Yeah, mine does not show that. Yeah, mine actually is not. Oh, nope. I don't have that under related items. Oh, no, I do. Okay, so Rachel, what you might need to do is make your screen wider, your window okay. wider. Okay, okay, that might be the case. I just did that and I got into it that way. Uh, well, no, I see, I see something that says related items, moderate this quiz and speed grader. That's where it will show up. Yeah. What are you using for a browser? Um, I'm on Firefox, I think. Yeah. Try to see what it looks like under Chrome. Okay. Let me open that. Is it, it so? But that's where it should be. Yeah, we can take a look at yours, Rachel, and see what's up. If you can't find it on a different browser. Yeah. But you see it, Jacob. Yep, I do see it. Yep, and I'm in Chrome. Have you seen it, Gail? Before? Gail's a master. Okay. So that, yep, and that's where you would find it, in the old quizzes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. Anything else people want to look at here? I see that it, it takes it and you can export it as an Excel sheet, but it adds like a lot of extra things after it that I don't know what they're for. Can you share your screen? Yes. Um, let me move my... I've got two monitors here, so <laughs> I'm like going all around the place. Okay, share screen. Okay, so so you can see in this um, in this class here. Let me see if I can like move you guys out of the way. I have all your faces. I can't move stuff. So, so I mean, right here, I just have a couple of quizzes and a um, couple of assignments, but then it gives me all this stuff. And I don't, I don't know what that is. It does not seem to show up on um, my grade uh, page. So Okay, well, we can kind of, are you, we can kind of look into that. Is this one particular quiz or? Um, no, that this is like all the stuff that I have for, um, for oh, grading. Um, so for example, this is like my grading mm -hmm. grades page. And you can kind of see that it, it kind of, this has all the stuff I have on it. And then it has these things that I don't know. Those are categories. Those yeah. are your categories. Okay. Are, they're called they're called uh, groups. They're so called. I can just like move some of these around well, that way. When you when you create when you created the quiz or the assignment, there is a. Uh, can you go to one of your quizzes or one of your assignments and, yes. and go to it and click edit? Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So click edit. Okay, so click edit on there. Okay. So right under that says quiz type, then you'll yeah. see assignment group. And so you'll have, to, you can either create, call it practice quiz or you can give it quizzes okay. or you can create a new one. Now in the old quizzes, you actually have to create, you have to actually go to assignments and create a, a, an assignment group. Okay. But other than that, you can just go to the assignment group and create. So that, I mean, that, that's a possibility too. I might've had it where it wasn't on quizzes before. So I can play with that a little more yeah. and just kind of And see. then okay. um, the other thing may just be some things that you, you might have. Uh, you might want to go to your assignments tab and your quiz tab and just look and see if there's anything that you might have imported from a Blackboard course that you're not using. And just um, I went ahead and deleted everything that I did not need. Great. 
So yeah, because that was like a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. So the big thing I would do is go through and edit all your quizzes and make sure that they're in the, that they're that you give them the right that you give them a category or, or a, 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 a an assignment group. Okay. And that will solve I think solved a lot of problems for you. Okay, great, thank you. Also, Rachel, I'm betting that the reason you're not seeing that analytics page, yeah, is because you don't have any data yet. No, oh, that's you don't have any in this class, so there's no data for it to parse. Okay. And there's, have you, have you tried the, and it's just, again, there's, you're not going to see anything, but there's also a really, there's a new tool called new analytics. I've, I, you, I remember, I think you telling us about that. Yeah. And it's in, if you go to um, settings, it's on the right side and it's on yeah. the bottom of the settings. Yes. I see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and FYI on that same page, and it's just a, there's a button that says validate links. And this is for everybody. If you oh. have a lot of links, especially YouTube videos, yes. because those come in and out a lot, validate. make sure before you publish a course, the last thing you wanna do is validate your links. Yes. And that will um, make sure all your links are good and it'll tell you the ones that are bad, then you can go and update those. Yes, that's a great, thank you. I appreciate that one right there because that happens to me all the time. <laughs> well, I just did that, I just, did that in my Wednesday class in my class today. So <laughs> that reminds me, if you want to do anonymous grading of things um, under course settings, under feature options, that is a thing you can turn on, which will allow you to grade essays without seeing names attached as long as the students didn't include it, right? Um, so if that's a way that you like to grade, that's an option. It's under feature options in settings. Yeah, that's a neat thing. But the, the 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 one thing I want to point out is if you do if you want to do anonymous grading, you do have to download all the assignments because you can't actually because yeah. it, it doesn't hide anything when you're in the grade book. Oh, when you go to a speed grader to grade, it actually puts their name in there. But if you download it, then you won't know who's who's what. Okay. Cool. It just gives you a student name. And then you can post the grade by this. It says student one, student two, student three. Uh, and again, that's on a whole different page in the grade center. Uh, that's in the, it's a whole, that's in one of the other sections of the grade center. If you want more information, please email me or, or Noah will take care of it for you. So the last thing I wanted to show you is in the grade center. I forgot to do this on Monday. And then I'm, that's really what I have to, to sort of do today. Um, and that is these, sorry, these are, I had to show you real students. So please pretend you don't see their names. Um, but these things here tell you whether things are on time, when they were submitted on time, late, et cetera, right? And if you have, our, we know our students get very worried about these things, about being late. So if you wanna say it's excused, you can go ahead and do it, right? Or that they don't have to do it. Um, that way they don't get worried about, the, about any of that, right? Does that make sense? Um, so these flags can be changed and that, I, I remember talking about the great Texas freeze this year. My students, are, I have honor students and they are very worried about late deadlines. So um, I've been doing a lot of changing flags to make sure that they are. That's what I have for you today. Um, let me offer that if you need anything, I will be more than happy to be available to help folks. Um, shoot me an email. Uh, my email is rinderkn. Uh, at UAW, or I'm the only Jacob with a K in the UAW system, so you can search for me that way. Um, and have a great couple of days, and thank you so much, everyone, for showing up today. Thank you. Thank you thanks a bunch, and thanks, everyone, for coming. Enjoyed it.